remake versus it's a series about taking an original film and facing it off against a remake film and i thought this was a totally original idea till i decided to look it up on youtube and it had already been a thing for years but despite this i still want to make a series out of it so i'm just gonna go ahead and do the series because why not So Maniac would be the first episode of the remake series and like I said earlier in the intro I thought it was a totally original idea but god damn it I remember thinking oh this is a cool idea but then people had already done a YouTube already I thought you know what I guess I'll do my version of it It's just a versus in and off against each other of the original and remake I don't know whether to jump back and forth between two films or just do the original and the remake I'm not sure because I do it back and forth editing wise this is gonna take forever So I might just do one film at a time I think that's what I'm gonna do Yeah that's what I'm gonna do Alright so we'll start off with Maniac 19 1981 the original starts Joe Spinell and immediately you're already creeped out by this guy in the opening he wakes up screen and the opening title is literally him just getting ready with his eerie music just kind of for like setting the atmosphere and tone just being like all right this guy's a nut job he's crazy in the head and, and I really like that the first kill is a prostitute it's interesting is that when he gets his first kill he sees like this other woman this other lady I'm assuming it's his mother because there's layers being peeled of his character and you, know, you see the pain on his face they don't give you too much which I like just being like hey this is why this guy's messed up in the head they're not telling us to sympathize with them but it's just more like telling us why he's this way and then that first like knife to the forehead and him taking off the hair he takes it out and he puts on a mannequin that's his thing that's his little niche thing he goes after a woman specifically a woman and then puts them on a mannequin hands and pretends to talk to them as if they're real and again just adding more to the creepiness the atmosphere and the very grimy look of this first film i like how low budget and grimy it is which is a positive mostly a positive the downside of that is it's missing something like i, I don't know in my video i'll talk about like something was missing i still don't know what it is I don't know. Something's just like that own to it. I, I just don't know. Something is missing to it. I just like most of this film is good, but something's just missing for me. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. He does this about two or three more times. Within the time frames, he meets a girl who's really into photography or whatnot. These two start creating a bond and whatnot throughout the film. He goes to her house, tell her he's an artist, lies about painting, but his art is mannequins and killing women specifically. Her art is taking photos and whatnot. But he kills these three other ladies. There's a cool like Tom Zavini makeup effect, the head explosion. <laughs> And a few others as well. That's the only one that really stood out. It is a rinse and repeat throughout the rest of the film. Not, not just this film, but the remake as well. It's a rinse and repeat, which I just kind of like a bit of variety in terms of my taste. But either way, they're fine kills. Like the first kill was cool, and then the head explosion. They're good. They're not amazing. And I heard that Tom Zavini, he's you know known as the horror like special makeup effects guy. You know, so I was like, I was expecting a lot more, but I just didn't. So like, there's this thing slicking his hair back and just be like, like almost looking at the camera like fourth wall break, just get, like talking to the audience, be like, he loves mannequins and he's talking to like us you know adding more to this craziness why not and then i guess the final girl is the girl that he built was a bond with and she finds out he's clearly insane and she hits him with the shovel which has him his like left arm hanging and then within that grave scene he starts saying mother like mommy you know it's like okay this is interesting this is coming back around childhood you know experiences why not it's like cool so when he starts hearing mother he just lets that one girl go goes back to her house and there is this one creepy ass scene of all the mannequins coming back to life all the women that he's killed coming back to life and basically eating him alive again kill him and then two cops come and turns out he just could have slit his stomach and committed suicide basically because he got caught but in his head mommy called and all the mannequins killed him and it, it ends on a friday 13-esque ending where there's a shot of him open his eyes and it closes in it loud music it's like okay they didn't need that but either way so an original film is good i don't love it right i just kind of like a bit more variety but still a good slasher film. the 2012 remake with elijah wood most of the movie if not all of the whole movie is seen through a pov shot we're in the shoot perspective of the killer himself and this could have been kind of bad but i really like that aspect of the remake i just thought it was a really interesting thing it makes it unique it makes it really stand out for terms of a remake and a film itself i don't know again i haven't broadened my film tastes or like film viewing experiences or whatnot but this is the first movie i've seen where most of it takes place pov and i really dug it i think it's a really cool idea and i was expecting not to like it but i, I really liked it now because it's a remake and a modern take in 2012 he goes after a woman online dating yes he meets the first killer the first victim he sees online dating and he goes out with this girl there's a scene in a dinner scene where again his perspective he looks at other people they start looking at him and his body starts going crazy like stuff like that where it's like clearly all these other people aren't looking at him but from his perspective from his vision it seems like all these people are like having eyes on him or just really staring at him hardcore staring at him it's awesome seeing the perspective and what's going inside the mind of the serial killer which is again interesting take which is why i really like the first one because our main protagonist is the killer more lie though what made me really like this film is when they had goodbye horse on 
can have a closer one on and then you can kind of see that he likes it but also is like fused again messed up in the head i'm assuming and then it goes from pleasure from choking basically and killing her and then he immediately like you know what it made me do he feels like guilty and it's a different take because he feels guilty but he, he knows what he did sort of but then he also did it either way or finds pleasure in it like okay this is an interesting take there's the mirror sh like pov shots he goes back to his home or not home but his store he owns mannequin he has a whole mannequin store full of specifically women mannequins and whatnot he builds a friendship and bond with a girl same thing in the original however one thing that they do add on in this remake is they build more on the relationship and friend bond between elijah woods and the girl the photography girl and they added this on just enough they didn't make it like a whole make it a thing throughout the whole film well they, they kind of did but it wasn't like, like a big plot until the end well it, i guess it is i don't know what the hell i'm saying but it kind of is and kind of is it they used her throughout perfectly and then again it is a rinse and repeat of him going off the girls there's that one scene where he's chasing that girl specifically through the subway train and all he's just telling her to the hell out of the way stay at the hell out of my way when i saw that scene i immediately thought of like this is, seems like a very realistic take of what some women go through every day of being followed fear of being followed by men certain men and fearing for their lives and so again he's chasing and chasing her he like cuts they're at like a parking garage or whatnot he like cuts her fucking artery on her leg or something i don't know why but anytime there's like an artery cut in a movie like the hell out that's what easily like humans can die that shit's scary to me but either way he could continuously the absolute shit out of her i was like god damn and then it cuts from a pov shot to like a normal camera shot and then he puts all the hair his facial expression is guilt but also pleasure like again building more on that sympathetic feel but he's still doing evil things so you know like you want him to die because in the original i never felt that joe spinell's character felt guilty i always felt that he was just straight up evil and this one elijah wood's portrayal is like pleasure and guilt so we do get i guess some flashbacks to his childhood of his mom just adding more to how he is again that part it didn't need to be there if i be honest and then what breaks this bond between the two quoted friends is when he kills her friend he tells her like immediately like a big old like just imposter syndrome shit where he's like she lived two blocks away he's like she's like how do you know and immediately red flags start flying she starts freaking out and she starts getting away when uh friends come and he kills that friend and there's like a long run he gets run over or whatnot she runs away from him it ends with him going back to his house him dying in his bed with a goofy ass look on his face by the way i remember in there then but like that's a goofy looking face elijah wood but either way he dies bad there's like no weird like fake out eye opening thing so yeah and the gore when he actually like when it's used gets the lady's head and pulls out that shit looks brutal 10 times more brutal in this film which i love so yeah the 2012 maniac remake is actually pretty good i like it again the like stick with the original with the reds are repeat but i really like this remake one of the better remakes out there with like friday the 13 and texas chainsaw massacre so between the two both films are the same in terms of the narrative but shot differently the original is shot normally and then the remake is shot in a pov shot the remake is obviously a bit more bloodier and gorier and more in a modern take the original has a low budget grimy atmosphere to it which i like as well the remake builds more on the bond between him and the girl while the original just slightly touches on it which makes the end part kind of awkward and weird we just see the opinion and joe spinell's character face in the original but we actually see the perspective of elijah wood's character and go inside the mind of his character as well so this is interesting i like both but i guess in the end maniac 2012 the remake wins stop staring you're missing a movie it beats maniac 1981 the original for me again this is a subjective this is just my takes and my opinions but i think maniac 2012 wins in this situation i think it beats the original because i just love that perspective and going inside the mind of the killer himself throughout the most of the movie so yeah i was expecting like the original but this 2012 one was, was really good so that's it for the first episode of remake versus again i hope to make this a series like i said an intro again this has already been a thing so shit you know but you know what i'm still gonna make a series out of it because it seems like fun why the hell not this has been the road so far and thank you for watching